Hey guys, it's Woody the Unexceptional Gamer, and this is Mail Monday. A weekly series is not so much about the gameplay, but instead is about your letters and my answers to them. Uh, the only reason I saved this crappy gameplay was for the kill cam. You'll see. I have had divorced parents since I was little. My mom is an extreme alcoholic, and she tried killing me before when she was drunk. I'm 14 and a freshman living in Indiana. She also practically lives off my child support because my dad is wealthy. I see him every other weekend. My dad's not very nice either, but he's better than her by far. I'm stuck living with her for now, though. I go to a private high school that has less than 20 people in the grade. The school's not even accredited, so I have a bad feeling it won't be good for me. Because of my mom practically ruining my life, oh, I've missed over 200 days of school in my life from her being hungover, and all the other things going on, I'm depressed at the least. Kind of suicidal. These aren't temporary problems, regarding to your usual advice. These ones are staying for at least a few years. I hide that I'm depressed from my friends because I don't want them to worry. I used to show it, but they thought it was for attention. The only ones who know are two girls in my grade. One I trust more than anyone. Speaking of that, I'm helplessly friend-zoned. Any help ideas with that? Not a hit-and-stick strategy. The school's too small for it to ever work. Please help me with my life. I don't know what to do anymore. Mainly the first two, but girl help always helps. I don't know if this makes Mail Monday or not. Just help me with this and email me back at least, please. <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> first off, this guy really impresses me. Like, I, I immediately like him. It, it's uh, He's a smart guy. His letter is well written. He, he's watched these other things. And I, I'm, I like the way he disarmed me with, uh, you know... Like, hey, don't tell me hit and stick. This still, school's too small for that strategy to work. Don't tell me that this is a temporary problem. This is something that's going to extend for a few years. He's uh, he's a pretty smart cookie, isn't he? And and I, the letter was well written. And you know, if he can just get out of this, he, he's going to have a brilliant life. Just hasn't started yet. So So let's talk about what we're going to do here. Step one, coping strategies, right? So you need to know that when things, when, when the shit hits the fan, you have to have some way of dealing with these problems, right? That that's that's necessary for you to have success in life. When um, the, I don't know, when your mom's drunk, when you miss school, when these things go wrong, you, you can't you know bottle it up inside and and let this take you to a dark place. Instead, I, I think you need to sort of shrug your shoulders, say doesn't matter, had sex, and 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 work it out or whatever works for you. But you need a successful coping strategy so that uh, w when things aren't working right, y you have a way of dealing with it. That's, that's step one. Step two, know your role, right? It, it, it might be easy to think of yourself as somehow like an unsuccessful kid, right? It might be easy to say like, yeah, I don't have the right home life. My mom drinks. Maybe she drinks because I'm not a perfect person. I don't know. You know what your role actually is? <laughs> you're the fucking superhero who manages to make it through life while you have all the odds stacked against you. That's who you actually are. You are, you know, you're not less than average. You're more than average. You're dealing with problems at a level that most people would not know how to cope with. That is why you are this, this super guy. Eventually, you're going to mature into a guy that deals with stress, that, that deals with problems at a level that, that regular people don't. Regular people are going to get all freaked out after a car accident, and you're going to shrug your shoulders and be like, yeah, move over, bro. I got this. That's who you are. That's who you'll be. That's your role. But for now, right, you know, you're 14 years old. Forgive yourself for things that might go wrong. And uh, how did I lose that gunfight? Forgive yourself for things that might go wrong and know that, um, uh, that, that, that you're going to be uh, really good at dealing with stress and trouble and such uh, in your older years. Step three, find support. And you're already on this, right? I, I, I see you from your, you know, friend-zoned girl thing that you got going on that uh, you're, you're already sort of hip enough to be like, all right, I need someone to confide in. I need someone who's there for me, who wants the best for me, etc. cetera. Uh, you know, be advised not to wear that out to, uh, completely. But, um, but you do need some support. You do need guys who are on your side in this thing because it sounds like your mom in particular is not coming up uh, strong enough where she's supposed to. So, um, uh, you know, that's, 
That's a key thing, right? You know, get your support system there. That's one of the things that a family is supposed to do, right? A, a family is supposed to provide you this, you know, base of operations, this sort of like w when school is collapsing around you, you still have family there to help you get through the hard times. That's, that's what family is supposed to do. You don't have that, right? You're operating without a net, at least to some extent. And, uh, you know, that, yeah, that, by the way, is one of the things that makes you this impressive tightrope walker. But, um, uh, you know, get your support system, get your friends locked in place and, and do your thing. So, uh, yeah, that's my advice on the big stuff. Um, I, <laughs> It's it's like I said at the start here. You kind of disarmed all the usual things. Oh, this is temporary. Oh, you know, you need to realize that uh, that this is all easy to come, easier to deal with than you'd think it is. No, it's hard. You know, I I acknowledge the uh, the difficult situation that you're dealing with here, but um, I, I think on the outside of it, on the other side, you're going to be a, a pretty neat person, a person that we'd all love to know. So that's that's that. As for the girl thing, you're hopelessly friend zoned. Um, I don't know what to do about that, really. You know, I I think you correctly nailed the. You know, look, you don't just hit and stick and move from, uh, you know, person to person to person when the situation I involves a class size of twenty, right? That that's pretty small. Y you're gonna run through the ten girls that you're going to school with pretty quickly if you just ask them all out. You know, my my class size was four hundred or something like that, and uh, you know, it was a different situation. As for what you do, you know, I. I think I'd keep my eyes open for a, a girl that likes you back. And if you do that, then it's quite likely that the girl that you're friend zoned with now is going to look at you in a different way. I don't know if you've ever done the same thing. I, I bet a lot of people who are listening to this right now have had people that they thought, we're okay, we're fine, whatever. And then as soon as they're dating someone else, you're like, ah, oh, I can't believe I missed that. That can happen in reverse, right? You can be the guy that they can't believe they missed. And then when you've got two people liking you, you have a decision to make. A wonderful, glorious, fabulous decision to make as far as which one of these girls hot for me you should be dating. So uh, um, that's that's my advice for you. Uh, I, I wish you the best of luck and keep in touch. Bro, I just moved to this school in September. Blah, blah, blah. Fast forward to this day I'm sending it in. The girl from my school messaged me on Facebook, asked for my number, and I gave it to her. That was our first day talking. One day later, she asked me to go to the movies next weekend, and I said yes. She said that we should go hang out at her house or mine a little afterwards. I'm 16, and I'm not looking for sex, by the way. Anyway, I'm really stuck. I like her a lot, and we've been talking for about a week or so, and we text nonstop. We flirt, and we've told each other everything. I'm not sure if she likes me, but I think I can find out easily. Anyway, do you think I should go for her now, or should I wait a little bit and not try to jump the gun? If you could reply and help out, I'd be much obliged. Thanks, bro. What a relief. I went from what I think might be the toughest letter I've ever had on Mail Monday to what very well may be the easiest letter I've ever had on Mail Monday. Dude, she likes you. She definitely likes you. I would bet money on the fact that this girl likes you. She asked you to the movies. She got your phone number. You text constantly. I mean, it, <laughs> you are just a little bit of you know, oral DNA short of completely removing all doubt. And, uh, and, and I think, by the way, that that's the next step. Right. I, I, I think that somewhere maybe at this movies, I got a little mixed up as to whether or not you actually went to the movies because it was like next week. But um, at this you know, hang out at her house afterwards, I think you got to kiss the girl. I think that is your next move. And uh, it's always been my go to move. And, and the reason why is if a girl kisses me back, I've eliminated all doubt that she likes me. I've always felt super comfortable with that. People say like, oh, I don't kiss on a first date. I always kiss on the first date. It, it to me was the most sure sign that she wanted a second date. That always made me feel kind of comfortable and warm and happy. And like, like that was the sign of a successful date. And, um... Uh, you know, but that's just me. Heck, I don't know. This was a long time ago, and, and maybe I only date sluts. Who knows? But, um, <laughs> you know what? I once had a person say I shouldn't use that word anymore. But uh, um, here's the deal. This girl likes you. She's sending you every signal she knows how to send you, and uh, um, that's that's where you are right now. So, so all is good, my friend. All is good. And by the way, this is why I didn't just delete this gameplay even though I had a crappy KD. I had all these guys to choose from and I went straight for the juggernaut. And I thought that was kind of a cool thing. It was like, you know what? 
I want the kill cam to be a jug. And you know what? The kill cam is a jug. So, um, yeah, there you have it. Uh, to the first guy, I, <laughs> I recognize the hard situation that you're in. If you can follow the game plan, right? Learn to cope. Find some support system. Uh, work your way through these things. Recognize what this is in the big picture. You know, just sort of a tough childhood with a brilliant future in front of you. Then you're going to be all right. Guy number two, if you kiss the girl, then you're going to remove all doubt and you'll be a happy camper. So I hope you guys enjoyed this week's Mail Monday. If you like the video and you're new around here, you can click on the top right and subscribe. If you're old around here, just click on like because it always makes things good. Two videos you may have missed. The top one is my dance challenge. Wings of Redemption and I have been going back and forth, and this is the latest episode in the dance challenge. The bottom one is Joe Lozon versus Anthony Pettis. As you watch this now, we'll see whether or not I was right about who won. I'm right. Who are we kidding? Joe killed him. So uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the videos, and have a good day.